so I've come over today because as always, I thought of a little gadget that I could use at the plot. I think of that barrel at the back that I've just fitted up. I don't want the water in the half barrel becoming stagnant. So I thought when I'm not using it for getting water, I may as well use it as a feature. Let's go have a look. So I bought this off Amazon, 15 pounds. I think it was a bargain. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit it all together now in a minute. And I thought this could sit there and I'll modify a pump because the one that come with it is mains power, but I cannot use that. So obviously I've got one in the shed from last year that's got a solar panel fitted to it. So let's get that done. So I've managed to get it work and I had to modify it a bit because I actually originally put the pump in here which means that the water would have pumped out out of here down the spout and then this would have drained out so I had to move it then obviously to put the pump in here so the water gets pumped up around here down back down and around so I've had to use a bit of hose pipe but that's all right it looks okay makes me want to go to wee though so the good thing about this as well is that it's not going to leave the water stagnant so that it's going to keep off mosquitoes and things like that that we might lay their eggs in there so hopefully you'll just keep the water flowing a bit and it also sounds nice as well when you're planting and you're sat you're having a coffee and it's all run off a little solar panel that will be fitted to the shed so free energy so last year i bought a cover for this ibc didn't get around to doing it but i'm going to pop it on now and then head down to linda's She's bought a different method of keeping her IBC from having all the sunlight go in and getting algae like this. So the idea is I'm gonna put the cover on now, but then later on I'll bring my power wash over and clean all this out, but just keeps the sun off these because what happens is algae growth goes in and then it goes all gunky and green, so you don't want that. So let's get the cover on and then head down to Linda's. So the sun has come out, so I've decided, I think I'm gonna take a gamble on these sweet peas. Now I direct sowed these and they've been in here now about a month or so. Some are doing okay, but if I do have a frost gear, I'll put the fleece back on. But I think 
it could do with uh, being shown. <laughs> All right, when I say I've had good germination, <laughs> not good germination at all. Oh, they are coming. Tell a lie. The sweet peas are coming. So I think if I take this off, they should start coming up now. So happy days. Sometimes as a gardener, you just got to have patience. The tulips, look at these. I'm just so happy with them. There's a mixture now of reds, yellows, oranges, and who knows what else is going to happen in this bed in the next coming weeks. But it's beautiful. What a showstopper. So I've also added in some wild rocket here as well, and that should be a nice extra added to the salad bowl. So I went to plant the ochre out and I just thought, who could I ask that knows about ochre? So I rang Mayu over and spuds and roses. And thank you so much, Mayu. She gave me some hints and tips of the best growing areas for my ochre. And this is what I've done. So in this planter, I put in some Dylan Keaton, some Scarlet with white eyes, some orange ochre, and also some New Zealand white with black eyes in here. So there's there should be, I think there's 12 in there, so hopefully that'll be okay. I've done four rows of four, and yeah, thank you so much, Mayu. So if you aren't already, go over to Mayu's channel, Spuds and Roses, give her a subscribe. I'll pop a link in the description for her channel as well. So thanks so much, Mayu, for your help on the Oka. Now, I think the mystery of the tulips is actually being solved. So I planted some over here, 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 but I was wondering where these like um, frilly ones were, but I think they're in here. They look like Brussels sprouts, but I think so. And I've got these beautiful ones like this as well, but tulips are absolutely stunning. So the sweet peas are started to bed in now and they won't be long before they'll start romping away up this obelisk. And inside here, we've got some tulips, some dahlias that haven't surfaced yet, some alliums and some grasses. So I'm hoping that just like last year, this will be a beautiful, Array of flowers. I met an old man. I said, Tell me your story. He took out an old man and wrote something for me. So I've moved all the um, plants that were growing in this bean bed here and this is almost ready now. There was some volunteer potatoes in there, even though I checked all the compost through, they still seem to get in, but I've already put some beans in as well, direct sown. Now I know it's a little bit early, but the way the weather's going, I'm just going to take a gamble. I have sown some in modules in the polytunnel as well that are for here, but if a few of these to take, then happy days, but I've direct sowed in yours now and I've taken out all the plants that I want and I've moved them to here. There's some guardsmen spring onions and also I've moved the chards and the spring onions over to here as well and some rocket into this bed and also built this as well. So another teepee structure. The carrots are looking lovely. There is a few gaps in there, but I'm happy with the germination that I've got so far in there. I've noticed a few parsnips are germinating as well. So and there is some beetroot coming up as well. So fingers crossed. But overall, I'm pleased with the structures now and I'm pleased with the way that this plot is looking. It's been really nice today just to get on with some jobs. 
pop my headphones in with just a podcast on or some music and just disappear, you know? Close yourself off from every distraction and just having that podcast or music, I'd highly recommend you getting some headphones and just disappear on your garden or your plot and honestly, it's such a different experience and you get so much more done. I also brought out the cabbages and some of the sweet peas and lettuces out of the polyton as well. One, it was getting too warm in there for them and also just to harden them off. These are almost ready to go out now, but um, I want them to be a little bit more sturdy and then they'll be all planted off down the, the Great Van Garden. Also, this TP now has been placed in between these beds. Now, I didn't need that walkway there and also it'll give another structure on the plot. Now, I had a structure here last year, so I was a little bit worried that I wouldn't want to, um, I'd miss it. So, yeah, that's going there. And I want to show you one more thing. So, if your tulips are now going over as well, then they're not like this, they're more like this, then this seed head on the top, snap off. Because what happens is, if you don't, this will concentrate on making seeds. And what you want is all the strength to go back in the bulb, and that'll give it more chance for a tulip next year. So, get rid of these. In the poly tunnel, I've had a bit of a sort out. These are mostly flowers and brassicas, the next succession of brassicas. But also, something else has changed. So these are back in here, and this was in your last year. It's just basically those metal poles and plastic that you have like over those mini greenhouses. I've stacked them all in, into one, and then I cable tie it to the poly tunnel. And this gives me more, more area for seeds and seed potatoes and things to grow that might get eaten by mice like runner beans and slugs as well like that's where I've got my um, lupins up here so this is just another idea to put in the middle of your polytunnel it's just having a, a shelving system here and believe it or not I've run out of space in this polytunnel through spring so I've come up with a big plans today I'm gonna head down the grapevine garden do a load of work there. Oh, look at the tulips. Look at the tulips here. They are almost in bloom now. There's a lot of reds, oranges, and yellows there. So I'm happy. I'm going to grab the bean canes. We're going down to the grapevine garden today. It's one hell of a job down there, mind, I'm telling you. So I'm at the grapevine garden, and I've got planned to sort out the onion bed, put those in, because they're the onions from seed and also put the potatoes in. So let me sort that out first and then I'll show you around the good, the bad and the ugly of the grapevine garden. There's loads to do here. There's some parts that are absolutely hell, but I'm gonna get through them like I always do, but let's get that done first and then I'll show you around. As you can see the state of me, I've been doing a bit of work, but let me show you the good, the bad, and the ugly of what's going on down here. The garlic is looking fantastic. It's been mulched with a bit of bark as well off the past, and I must say that's kept down some of the, you know, the, the minor weeds. The onion sets are looking great. The nets have had a good, you know, bashing from the wind the last week or so, but I've got some nettles coming up here that I need to cut down and dig out, but I'm gonna have to move all the slabs for them. There's a bean structure. God, isn't she grand? And I am absolutely loving it. You know, I really wanted to use the hazelnut, but we couldn't get enough of it this year because they were trimming all the hedges down a little bit earlier. And, but yeah, it is what it is. The onions from seed, they're in, and they look absolutely fantastic. I'm so pleased with them this year. Hopefully they won't bolt. And we've also got in some potatoes. So I've got in here the purple potatoes, like the bluey purple potatoes from Nanu at plot number nine. 
I've got two rows of Charlotte and then also some pink furs. I am going to top this back up as well in a couple of days with some manure, some bagged manure, just to fill this bed up. This bed, ah, oh, I need to dig that over, but I'm not pushing now. I'll wait for, I'll wait for another day because I don't want my ribs to be sore from moving all that. So that's for another day. But let me show you what else is the ugly. So I've shown you all the progress and all the good things, but let me show you hell. This is behind the grapevine and it has gone rampant. Since I couldn't work on you at the start of the year, I've got a pile of nettles. Now I did have some nettles here, which I was using to put in the barrel, but it has gone rife. So this will have to all be dug over. And also I've got an infestation here of like, uh, I think it's black breeze, uh, black breeze. So that's gonna have to all be dug out as well, but there's barrels in there. <laughs> there's compost heaps. Mark's down there being a plonker, but yeah, this is this is going to be a job and a half, but I'll get through it and I'll definitely get this done. Down the bottom, it looks a mess as well, but actually it's all my fruit bushes. They're all in bags with bits of compost and all, keeping them going. They really need to go in, so I'm going to have to try and find a space for them because obviously I couldn't build the fruit cage, but they'll have to go in somewhere as well. But the pond's looking great, everything else, but there's quite a bit of work to do here as well, so... Yeah, we're going there. Now I will top dress this as well with some more compost. There's a delivery coming in, so I'm gonna have to order some. And I, what I've done is I put some Grow Organic down as well and some chicken manure pellets for nitrogen to obviously boost the beans when they go in, in a couple of weeks time. But so far, everything's looking good and I'm, I'm in love with this. Now I've got some spare canes down here. So I think I'm gonna make one more teepee for sweet peas and plant them out. And then also use some of these for the um, sunflower structure that I need to build. So let's get that done. Cheers, Mark. Well, that was nice of Mark. Um, I popped down there to see him and he gave me a nice bottle of rhubarb and gooseberry wine from 2023. And we've been drinking this on the plot. Me and also Linda at the Feel Good Garden, she had a bottle as well. And it is like nectar of the gods. I'm not even joking you, beautiful wine. And also, as always, I forget to sow Tigerella. So as always, Mark gives me two Tigerella plants as well. So thank you very much, Mark. I repeat this all the time, but that's actually one of the nicest things about our allotment site is the community side of it. Sharing, swapping, and everyone's quite generous as well and want people to try new things. And I'm definitely always happy to get a rhubarb and gooseberry wine. So I think what I'm going to do is at the end of summer, I think I'm going to start maybe trying to make my own wine. So maybe I'll do a video on that as well. So pop in the comments if you'd like to see, you know, how we make wine from the produce on the plot. And I want to try like some plum wine and some cherry wine. So yeah, that's in the plan as well. So people always think that everything will go to plan. And this year has definitely tested me. You know, I had COVID two times. I had the flu, I had a chest infection, and then I damaged my ribs. So this has really, really affected, you know, the major work that I need to do on the grapevine plot. But it's not the end of the world. Things are, you know, things are ticking over. You know what I'm like? I'm taking it slow though, because obviously I don't want to put too much pressure on the ribs, but we're going there. There's a couple of beds that need to be weeded now and dug out, but you know, if they're too strenuous, then I'll leave them. It's not the end of the world. I'll cover them over and they'll come for another day or another week. So don't put pressure on yourself if your plot or your garden isn't to the stage that you was hoping for, because it's not the end of the world. It's just a garden and you need to enjoy it as well. So don't resent it. I've said this many times, but I am actually loving the fact that I'm down on the Grapevine Garden today and got loads to do. And there's cherry blossom and apple blossom. I'm hoping that the plums will, you know, I'll have quite a good harvest of plums this year as well, but we'll see. Let's get back to work. I've also dug out this bed as well. It wasn't, it wasn't hard, this one. It had so many nettles in it. I don't know what it is. I'm wondering whether or not it was the manure I put in there because this was a few beds that have had nettles come up and they never had nettles before. So I'm wondering whether or not it was in the compost, you know, in the manure that I, I sourced from another farm. Hmm. 
I feel like I've made so much progress today as well, so I hope you enjoyed your visit at the Grapevine Garden. I'm Danny and this is Grow Up.